I will. Hello, my name is Kyung Se Ho. I'm Tower Terra. You watching FX TV. <laughs> And welcome everyone to game one here for the FX opening to uh, Korean King of the Hill number 15. It is going to be OGS the STC up against Infinity 7's Crazy Moving. Both these guys very strong players over here in Korea, so it's going to be very interesting. We are going to, I am of course, am unstable. Joined here with Railcoon for this one, and we are going to have a very special TBZ to start this off. We're going to have close air spawn positions on Metalopolis and. The STC did take count, Slayer's Golden in the final match, that is why he is seeded first to this King of the Hill, give him the best possible chance to get the longest streak, so I want to see uh, more mules dropping to repair tanks. That was awesome. <laughs> that series <laughs> against Golden was set. really good, it was really back and forth, the STC took it out after losing uh, the first game and then just 2 0 Golden after that, they were really good games, very entertaining, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to seeing STC play because of that. Yeah, it's going to be very, very good. Of course. Uh-oh. Crazy move. Whoop. Oh, hello. Uh oh is he going to drop another one down there? Maybe, but it has been Oh, no, he made a refinery. Things, so. So what He's trying to be a little bit to? inside the head, because this is best of one format. Remember, it. winner stays on. And let's see. We we do have the hatchery going down for Crazy Moving anyway. He's probably going to be pulling a couple of preemptive drones just in case. We'll be able to keep this overlord here for a little bit, but he's going to have to back off. He's going to have to pull comes out. a drone here to spot for the hatchery because his second overlord actually moved up towards the smoke of STC instead of down towards its natural. Uh, especially yeah, on right. some of these maps, a lot of the players like to send their second overlord just to spot for bunkers. We see a second drone coming down very early. He's going to check out for bunkers and this is going to stay in that area. Uh, so very intelligent by Crazy Moving. And that barracks is done. SCV's on his way, he's like, -la 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 -la. I'm gonna bunker. <laughs> uh, on this map, there's no super annoying bunker spot. There's a couple that kind of suck, but you can deal with it if you pull your drones fast enough. But it doesn't look like he's actually Well, you going can wall it off like you saw the STC do last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, does, does that work on this position? I'm not exactly sure, but that is something I'm going to be taking out very shortly. Uh, of course, we do see the bunker going straight down, but nicely done by Crazy Moving. Instantly got enough drones to be able to tr throw away with this Marine. He does lose one drone, unfortunately, oh. but he will get and completely shut this down. But even though he shut it down, we do, of course, see the factory up in the main. So he's putting a little bit of pressure on early for the STC and going straight into those Hellions. Uh, really strong. Yeah, opening. we should see so. a command center in the moment as well. Uh, this is just a yep. very standard Hellion opening. Get that command center out before you start that first Hellion as well. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just basically what you should be expecting as a Zerg player at this point if you're playing a really, really good Terran. This is pretty yep. much the standard opening for this matchup. And Spine and... Crawler going down in Crazy Moving's natural. He probably will need a second one unless he throws down some creative evil chambers, though. Yeah, well, just I just catching on to what I said before. Crazy Moving did get knocked out of Code 8 by Hero. Look what he's Hero, he went down 1-2 to that, so if you can take a game off Hero, we should be in for a very interesting game Who just with won the STC. DreamHack, mm -hmm. by the way. So. Yes, he just won DreamHack, so... Very cool. Oh, he's uh, poking with that Overlord, trying to see what's at the top of that ramp. Looking at the vision for Crazy Moving, though, if I hit the right hotkey, hasn't <laughs> uh, seen any of this. Uh, there are the Hellions coming down the ramp. Has seen it now, though. The Ling does get roasted at the top of the ramp. He's now moving down. There's still only that one spine crawler, but the queen is getting in position to block that ramp, and there's still that one spine, and the second queen at it down at the bottom. He's only making two lings, though. Not really worried about these first two Hellions, but of course, there's going to be two more following up here from the STC as he expands. So let's see yeah. if he can put enough pressure on to get under a crazy moving skin. And crazy might have to transfer the drones up to the main if STC gets really aggressive with these Hellions. See, so he's going to be able to poke in and get one drone. Huzzah! And then he's going to back off and wait for the next two Hellions. Uh, there are a few more Zerglings on their way out. Zergling Speed's going to finish soon as well. So he might be able to hold off just in time for Zergling Speed to finish. And then he should be able to chase these away. So he's just uh, buying time with these Queens. Some Zerglings poking their heads out as well. He's doing a good amount of damage to these Hellions. This Queen's at about half health. though. don't want to get off the creep. Oh my god, that queen's really close to dead, unstable! Oh, he got the queen! No. <laughs> That's why you do not want to leave the creep. 
Yeah. So, looking back over here, the expansion's moving down, we're moving over into more tank play. Of course, we do have Stim on the way, a second Stimmer. barracks being made. And there's still two overlords in good positions to come in here and scout if Crazy Moving wants them to be. And looking very strong in this first game, he did lose that first queen, but of course he still has a second one. He's not trans... Uh, sorry. He's not lava injecting the main hatch at the moment, just because he's paranoid about those, but he has enough links to drop that ramp. It should be okay. A Zergling actually managed to get up into STC's base, sneak by everything, even though there's six Hellions here, get up into the main, not only see the third command center, just about, about to finish, and also just start hitting it a few times, because it made him angry. <laughs> so... He scouts that STC went for this really aggressive expansion. He's deciding to put the layer down at the natural. Now, I would not be surprised to see some form of aggression here. Baneling Nest on the way, but against this many Hellions, probably want some Roaches as well, because, well, Hellions with good micro kind of beat Banelings when you try to do, use them aggressively. It's just they kite, and then the Banelings die as flash damage. Mm -hmm. So we are do see the double upgrades coming through. <clears throat> yeah, Hellion's chasing away just a single Zergling in the center of the map. It looks like Crazy is actually just dropping a third hatch right now. Um, his Banely Nest is on the way and he's got the lair almost done. So it looks like he's just going to move into normal Muta Banely. Uh, against this quick third command center though, you do not want to stay just even with that. He's probably going to have to look to drop a fourth relatively quickly if he wants to stay ahead in the economic game. Uh, because he knows that STC put a lot into these expansions early on, and mm -hmm. you probably will be able to get away with that if he drops it soon enough. If he waits too long, though, STC will be able to move out and start pressuring it. Also, the question is, does he put it on the gold? Does he put it down here at 6 o'clock? Uh, probably would be easier to defend the gold at the moment, though, with his creep spread. Gotta love the Zergling. Stopping the commands then is dropping down, though. <laughs> There's actually quite a few more Zerglings coming through. They will be able to clean up these four links coming to let that command center drop. A nice little bait there by Crazy Moving. At the same time, he's got Hellions down at his third. But there's not really that many units to be able to defend it. He's gone for more of the... He's actually... Wait, hang on. He's got his lair at the natural here. Yeah. So, interesting. Has cleaned up those marines, and he actually could do a little bit of damage to this mineral line. The bunker being on the south end of that command center means that uh, the units oh, right at the very north should be able to take barely sees out. those banelings up on the top left of the base, but he only saw it for just a second. But Crazy Moving actually canceled them. I don't think STC had actually noticed them, even though he saw them for half a second. Would have had a decent chance yeah. to try and get into the mineral line there, but... Looks like all of this is going to get deflected. Zergling's getting chased away by the Hellions. Banelings got cancelled because of the siege tanks. And, well, he hasn't started a fourth base yet, so he's still sitting three base to three base against STC. And STC's third base finished sooner, so this is not really a good position for Crazy right now. Yeah, exactly. But... That being said, he's got a lot of muters on the way. The plus, double plus one is finishing up for the STC. He's actually for, uh, been forced to do a supply drop down here. The only time that I can see that being intentional is if with some special special timing attacks. Yeah. But this late into the game, very big mistake, the STC. I expect more from you, buddy. <laughs> I expect much more. It's not <laughs> bad to have a deal with like, If you're really far off on your depot, there's some people who are really stubborn about it. And they're like, I will never drop a hat on my depot. There, there are Hellions coming in on the third base, though, at the same time getting... Kill a lot of drones. No, they're gonna shoot the queen and only get about four drones. I thought he was gonna Ooh, do more damage than that. Up though, as they're trying to take them out, the muters are coming in to help clean it up as well. And he only got eight workers in total, so very uncharacteristic by the STC to have that happen. We've got a fourth base going down at the six o'clock over here by Crazy Moving as well. Uh, I like that choice simply because most Terrans will only check the low ground this this early in the mm -hmm. game, as we're only like 13 minutes in. He's now taking his fifth base, as I do to see the silhouette down here for that hatchery as well. Nice overload positioning by Crazy Moving during this. Yeah, I don't know. It's late enough, though, that SEC could become suspicious. Like, he went for that quick three base. He knows it got scouted, and he didn't get all in. So usually that means the Zerg player is going to try and throw out an extra expansion somewhere. And if he hasn't seen it yet, he probably is going to check around for it. I wouldn't be surprised if it stays secret for a long time. But these units in the main base are just... Taking a ton of damage. Oh my god, Unstable. There's only three left. He was oh, trying to god. camp out the Marines as they came out of the barracks, but STC, instead of directly challenging the Mutas, actually sent his big pack of Marines down on the low ground below the barracks. 
then sent yeah. a couple up the ramp and then just sort of corralled him into a corner between all of his marines and his turrets and he just took heavy losses before he could get out that was really sick by SDC yeah of course we of co do see these links parked over here for any kind of extra expansion as we do see the SDC just now planting his fourth command center and it's a lot more even than it really looks here looking over here we got s like pretty much even 76 well but links coming into the third base as I say that and what are they doing Burr. Burr. Trying to hit the SCVs on the refinery. Needless coming into the main base now, running into quite a lot of turrets and a couple stray marines. They are going to be forced away, but STC is poking out onto the map. He does want to clear out this creep. Yeah, there we go. Nice scan, taking out a lot of creep tumors. That will push the creep back a pretty considerable distance, checking the watchtower as well. I would not be surprised if he just backs up right now, because that army is not very big. Uh, the main thing He's is... He's cleared out a lot of the creep, and that's all he really needs to mm -hmm. do uh, yeah. in this position. Crazy moving doing a great job of respreading it though, even like you can see all the different layers of creep that's been going across. He's connected all five of his bases pretty much as well. Uh, looking at this, he's over also got overlords on the left hand side to spot drops coming down there as, uh, again. So STC is going to have a hard time engaging into this because he's going to have to come on creep. He's going to sit by this cliff face so there's no surround, but oh, he's not going to give him a chance. Oh, his tanks were unseized and a bit of a. Why didn't he go in? Yeah, that was a, a bit of indecision there by Crazy Moving. He had a really strong spot. I think he wasn't confident about taking out the rest of those Marines. So he's waiting for these tanks to move forward again. But the SDC at 2-2 two -two compared to the 1-1 one -one here. Almost going to be 2 armor for these Zerglings as well. But at the same time, these Muters are coming across into the middle of the map to help out with this. So there are Thors on the field for the STC now. He's going to be trying to secure this gold base, and Crazy Moving looks like he's ready to try and sandwich this, but oh, look at this! The Muters are stacked up at the moment, trying to get onto that Thor, and nice magic boxing by him to take that out, and he's going to completely stop this, forcing the STC to come back and defend this gold base. Very nicely done. Yeah, he will get chased away, but he's not going to take too much damage before that happens. Uh, there is a drop in the main base, though, at the same time. Took down the Queen. Not going to get much else, though, before he's cleaned up. The Medivac and Marines chased out of there. Uh, crazy moving, just still sitting pretty solid on these five bases. He's got all these Zerglings and Banelings just running around very defensively on his side of the map. Even when he had a pretty good opportunity with STC being completely on siege, he's not doing anything. And I mean, he's at 200-200 and still he's just playing defensively with his units, trying to make sure he doesn't get dropped. I'm really surprised by this, because if he's going to do this, then he should be having a, lay a hive started already. But the well, he's being delayed on that the pit. infestation pit not done yet. That's, yeah. that's purely why he's sitting like that. I do agree with the decision to sit back defensively at this point in time, because he doesn't want to get caught in the wrong spot. But we do see the STC moving forward on the right-hand side of the map now. We have the muters on the left. They might actually come in and try and take out this planetary, because there's enough muters in that flock to try to take out these three turrets, especially if one of them's not finished yet. But we do have Marines on the ramp down here. But interestingly enough, the STC is only on the bottom of that cliff. And here come the muters into the gold base. They're going to completely get rid of these turrets quickly. And the STC is going to be forced to pull his marines back to defend this. Actually, only brings half of them. Very wise choice. Doesn't want to get caught at the beginning. Yeah, these are 2-2 two, two marines, like, though. They're going to be 3-3 three, three yeah. in just a few seconds. So you can see that they're doing quite oh, a bit of damage. Oh, he's actually with the marines with the muters. And he's actually coming out on top here. He's losing a lot of muters, though. He is yeah. down to 16. I wasn't really oh, and STC got up onto the top of the ramp at the same time, trying to get in a good position against Crazy Moving. He does get cleared out, but he does have to use some Banelings there. Now the Muta count is relatively low. He's replenishing with the Muta count, just going right back to 200-200. He's working on getting his plus two air armor as well. That's why they were doing so well against the Mutas, the Marines, excuse me, is that they have the air armor. When plus two comes out, it'll be doing all right, but... 3-3 uh, three, three is done on these marines. They are extremely fearsome at this point. And if you look at the upgrades for Crazy, he's at 2-1. Well, he's going into these turrets as well. He still does have a nice number of units. 25, he's just going to work on all these turrets. But there's so many turrets here for the SBC. A lot more than he normally makes. It's usually probably due to a read on Crazy Moving's playstyle. He does have the Hive now. It is under attack by the marines, though. He needs to come in and defend this. And he's coming forward with all of these Lings and Banes, but they are still in range of the tanks. And... Oh, this is very Ooh. dangerous here. Ten more muters in production. Of course, the marine can is getting uh, dangerously low and spread out. And there we go. The med medivacs go down. And look at this. He's actually coming in onto the tanks. As the banelings come in from the front, the marines are forced to retreat against these muters. And he does still have quite a few marines left, but he will be able to defend that hive. This is 
got so many more muters on the way. That's all he's really making at the moment. 40 lanes in production as well. These muters are still muters trying, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the marines, but they're getting forced away. Those 3-3 marines are just... They're dying, but they're taking so many mutas with them that it's more than cost-effective. You can see that SCC has brought the supply difference back to even. He's just streaming marines and tanks across the field. A couple Thors popping out occasionally. Level 2 weapons for his vehicles are going to be done soon as well, which will help out the Thors and tanks so much. And there's just constant aggression on this natural expansion with the high on it unstable. Yeah, that is. He's losing a little oh. bit. Nice bungle coming in. He's actually going to go for it with that, and these marines are actually going to melt. The infested getting a little bit ahead of himself. There's not enough marines to deal with this mute account, so the STC will be shut down. Going to lose all these tanks as well. And this persistence by Crazy Moving to use these plus two armored uh, muters against the marines in small clumps is paying off. He's still even in supply. He has 71 drones to the 73 SCVs. He's got those five bases to the STC's four, and. There's just turrets everywhere. He can't really be aggressive with these just yet. Yeah, really needs to he's having... to go up to that hive. He's got Brugelords on the way. He's moving into the Brugelord Infester as well. Both these guys playing very, very well in their first game. Yeah, uh, I thought that Crazy was actually starting to fall behind there, but he got a really good fungal off. That really turned the tide onto STC. STC is actually going for the high sec auto tracking, which actually extends the range on his turrets and the planetary fortress. So since these turrets are doing so much work against the mutas, that's actually very understandable. Helping out the planetary fortress is going to be just a secondary effect. It's a very cheap upgrade, and it only takes like 75 seconds as well, so it's very fast. And he's got 3-3 three, three upgrades on his engineering base, so it's not like he needs the time on that anyways. But we've got ghosts on the way. And that Ghost Academy is going to finish up right about the same time as that Greater Spire. Again, Mute is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marines being forced to pull back due to that Thor, though. And right about now, I think he's starting to realize he needs to free up a little bit of supply. He's at 170. Those Mutas aren't going to be as effective very shortly with the Ghosts, Marines, and Thors here. A drop is being dropped down here at the Natural near the Hive, but he's going to be cleaned up very quickly. And it's very... It, oh, he does see another drop coming into the, into the main. main, though. He's going to go for the Spawning Pool. No, there's way too many leaks <laughs> waiting for that to happen. Yeah, but at the same time, SCC now moving along the southern pathway of the map, loading up one medevac descent down to this 6 o'clock location. The other part of the army is just going to siege up here and get in position. He doesn't have a very big force at the moment. Uh, he's got 72 SCVs, which is more than what you usually see Terrans go for because of the mules. So his yep. army is actually not that big, and there's a pretty big portion of it still coming across the map, so he has to be very careful. If Crazy had chosen to go in on him there, he would have been able to take out the army with only half of it there. Getting the medevac with a lot of units in it there as well. These mutas are doing a lot of work. Now there's corruptors on the way, so there will be broodlords out on the field soon. And, well, the SCC hasn't made any ghosts yet, but there are some vikings on the field. He's preemptively waiting for these broodlords to come out. But Crazy Moving is taking out the extra base over here, I believe it's the 6th one for the STC, as he was delaying it with some Zerglings before at the 9 o'clock position, can also try and come and take this extra one uh, just up north of that as well. STC forced to pull back to defend it, and Crazy oh. Moving is picking... Whoa! Getting the Vikings with the Mutas, oh, but they stack up right into that Thor shot! Ouch, that's a plus two Thor as well, so a lot of Mutas took a really big beating there. Um, but that was really good, taking out those Vikings, because, well, STC, he thought he knew the timing for the Broodlords, didn't see any Broodlords, and stopped making the Vikings. So he took out the counter attack only... by Crazy Moving here into the Marines. Unfortunately, the Lings aren't going to do anywhere near as much, but I believe that was just to free up some supply, some supply for the extra Broodlords coming through. He still yeah. has these mutas being frustrating. There is a whole heap of Marines just sitting in that fifth base for the STC, because he is mined out in pretty much... One, two, almost three of his bases, the same situation for Crazy moving, and the only base Crazy has left is that gold, and that's going to be very difficult to hold on to, especially with the aggressive tendencies the STC's been showing us here at the moment. I don't but know, here's I think the thing, crazy. crazy moving has no bank at all, where the STC does. Yeah, but the Crazy's in a pretty good position, because he's got a lot of Broodlords that just popped out, they only just got scanned, he needs to move now, because he actually took out all the Vikings, the aren't really any ghosts. The first two are just about to finish. He has an opportunity to do a lot with these Broodlords and he's just sitting here because he doesn't realize that SCC has no Vikings. He saw Vikings earlier so he's being really careful about it and since he's sitting around and waiting oh, the and ghost being careful... Oh, the Ghost Academy is taken out by the Mutas with the cloak upgrade as well. Very nicely done. 
You don't really want to be mixing in extra gas for those overseers against this unit composition. So it's very interesting. And looks like these muters coming down, trying to... Are they going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with more marines? No, they're deciding to back off. But they are at 2-2 for the air upgrades at the moment. Where are these and broodlords these going? Doing a lot of damage. <laughs> He's already at 3-3 for his lings. And one more upgrade, and those broodlords just tear through everything. There's only <laughs> one Viking on the field in Stable. This is a really good opportunity for Crazy, especially since you're saying his bank is not in as good of a position as STC's, but he's using his broodlords defensively all the way across the map. Now STC is just attacking on the entire opposite side of Metalopolis. Those broodlords are going to take forever to get over here to defend. There's only one broodlord here, and that Thor can take care of it by himself, so he's going to siege up, try and deal with the ground forces with the rest of his army, and then probably be able to back away before the broodlords oh, get their whoa, great fungal! fungal. And the Muta's coming in as well. Oh my god, Crazy actually cleaned that up with the he epic fungal. He needs to save that Greatest Fire. He needs to save the Greatest Fire. Not gonna happen though. He has to go all the way back up to high tech before he can get more Broodlords. The Broodlords shelling over here in the main base, but the STC does have a chance to, to remax with some more Vikings now as he's not some Fire But Crazy moving 50 supply up. He does not. Like, it's just going to come down to he's, can he keep these Brutalords alive. He's sacrificing his Brutalords. He's sacrificing his Brutalords. Trying to take out a base that's mined out already. Why is he just giving them up? Oh my god, he actually lost a lot of Brutalords there. He will be able to take out that Planetary Fortress, but STC didn't really care about that that much anymore. I mean, well, he was... it's a defensive position to run back to, and how holding that middle of the map is extremely important against the, in this phase of the game, though. So that does make a little bit of sense. He's not going to be able to deal with the extra units, but the STC is out of out of minerals here at the moment. Ooh. He's only at 144 supply to the 177. All that crazy moving, and these brutal odds are moving forward. There are no ghosts here just yet. Only two infestors on the field, but there's muters and there's corruptors to help deal with the anti-air coming in from the STC. And oh my God, I think. If Crazy Moving pushes in and he's, he's careful with these Brutalords, he might be able to finish this off. Yeah, he's We've got, got Brutalings coming in being frustrating. Characters. Lings coming in as well. And then the Mute is trying to pick off all of these Vikings. And the Lings are just surrounding these Thors here, not allowing them to get anywhere close to the Brutalords. More Lings reinforcing at the moment, but there's a Planetary over here on the left. There's no way he could, the Crazy Moving can really counterattack into that. He's left his Brutalords back here, what? Yeah, he keeps not he taking care of his Brutalords very well. This is why I'm really surprised, because, you know, he lost the tech to rebuild these. He's got a lot of Corruptors, but they're just Corruptors. They're not going to be any replacement Broodlords here for a while. They the are doing a decent amount of damage, but he can start rebuilding some of his barracks and such over here on the left side. And you thought he had to start back from scratch? Yeah, he had to just had to rebuild his uh, spawning pool, so... Not even well, any that was taken out by the drop in the main base. Just then. Well, that's why he pulled out all of his links and bane links. He still kept his corruptors and muters there to defend against these brutalists, but they are standing, starting to whittle down eventually. Links surrounding Thors over and over again. He is still 50 supply up, and these brutalings really helping out with the links in the mix as well. Not really sure for that AI which ones to attack, but he still has these two extra bases over on the left. But it doesn't only matter. Two brutalords now. Yeah, there's oh. no way he can stop that with the production he had. GG, crazy moving. Be nice. Going up against who's got up next? Actually, I gotta have to check. Next is. He's gonna be up against uh, World Elite's Loner on Taldarim Alter. So we'll get into that after a quick 90-second commercial break. Stay with us. Alright, so we are in the lobby now, guys. We're going to get this game started as soon as they're ready. The countdown started now. Let's go into game two. Crazy Moving versus Lona. And after the STC couldn't take down Crazy Moving, I'm not sure if Lona can, to be honest. We'll see.
My name is Dong Young Lee, StarCraft ID, FX Olino. You're watching FX Open Collection. And welcome back everyone. Game 2 for the FX Open Korean King of the Hill. Number 15 here. He's going to be cra uh, Infinity 7's crazy moving up against World Elite Lona. And last game we had a very intense match on Metalopolis. Almost mined out all the bases there between the STC and Crazy Moving. This map is even bigger. Are we going to see one just the same here, Railcoon? I'm not sure, but I hope so. Yeah, um, Crazy was playing a pretty defensive style through the early stages of the game. Uh, it could have been just because of the way that STC went for that really quick third base. And he just didn't want to underestimate the production on STC, but when I was looking at it in the later stages of the game, STC never really got up to that high barracks count to be able to reproduce his army very quickly. He used a lot of minerals in the center of the map to repair that planetary fortress that was being shelled by the Broodlords as well. And then he just couldn't actually make enough units. He was in a situation where he could have taken the win if he could get enough marines out in time. So, we'll see. Like... Loner has shown us some really good games in the past. He is the Chinese player we've seen on a number yep. of occasions. He used to be on the GSL. Um, just very talented. He's come on here and played really well, but I don't think he's had much success in our King of the Hill so far. Yeah, it's really hit and miss for some of these guys. Some weeks they'll go on a great run like we saw OGS Vines do last week. He was reinvited for this one, so don't worry everyone who missed that. <laughs> uh, at the same time, some people come in and they go, they just lose. Like, Leenor came in our King of the Hills two weeks in a row, got Taldarim and got beaten because, like, it was versus Protoss. And during that week, everyone was doing the six pulls versus Forge expands. <laughs> and the players he was playing weren't Korean, they were Chinese and uh, Taiwan, I believe. And they weren't actually going for Forge expands, so it was like instant loss. So I was like, oh. That does happen sometimes due to the best of one format, but then again, we also get games like we just saw. So it will be very interesting. Lona has scouted the position of Crazy Moving, of course. He's gonna see. He's not going for any kind of aggression, though. Interestingly enough, he hasn't walled off over here. He's getting that factory. Looks like we're gonna be going seeing some Hellions. How how unusual, Railcoon. I know. I'm so shocked that we're gonna see Hellions in Terran vs. Zerg. Uh, I mean. Mm. I never would have guessed that that would happen, but do you see that Crazy is going for a really early Roach Warren? So we'll see what he plans to do with this, especially since Loner, well, isn't walled off right now. He does have that uh, Supply Depot in a point where he could drop the Command Center behind it, but that would still be relatively easy for him oh. to break through. Oh my god, Loner, don't you dare drop. <laughs> the joys of being... Uh, he's No, he's in Korea now, isn't he? Is he in Korea again? I don't, he moves around a lot that Yeah, day. he does go back and <laughs> forth. Uh, I mean, it is one of the reasons why he does so well, because sometimes when you're in China, the, the connection is just, like, worse. It's kind of random between China and Korea. So uh, I know that he, in particular, has gone back and forth a couple times just to have that stable connection and be able to practice really well. Uh, this is not cool. But based on the lag, I would guess that he's currently in China. <laughs> <laughs> It's always fun when this happens. Of course, these games are live, so unfortunately this is inevitable. Yay, but there is a Roach Warren finishing up. If he does drop, we can probably just swap him later in the lineup to when his yeah. uh, connection's a little bit more stable. Oh, he's back. Yeah. Hopefully it will uh, stabilize and we don't have to worry about it. But if it does yeah. happen, it's not really an issue. We can just put him a few games later, and hopefully his connection will be more better by then. Look at this micro from Loner, though, against the Zerg Links. <laughs> running the one low health marine around in circles, the other one can shoot at that zergling. But there are seven roaches on the way from Crazy. He does not have the speed upgrade, so it doesn't look like he's really going to commit to this. He's going to go forward with the roaches, poke, try and get as many SVs as he can, then drone behind it. Uh, yeah. And when you go with these roach attacks, well, there's not even a bunker here unstable. This could still... Oh, like, running straight into the Hellions. Now Lona knows what he's dealing with. This build has was really popularized in the foreign scene by FX, so it was lucky here. Uh, really yeah. punishing ha reactor Hellion builds. There's the bon bunker going down in the main, but he isn't... Is he going to be able to finish up this command center? Why did he like wall with that bunker? Moving? Who knows, but he's going to be able to get through here, actually doing a lot of damage to those Hellions. Going to get through that bunker as well. Uh, sorry, that's oh Mighty Post. Stops the crate building on the bunker. There's only three roaches here, though. There is a Marauder out, taking a lot of damage from this, and the bunker is building yet again. But these roaches doing an insane amount of damage. Oh, he's going to gonna get MCVs. the Marauder. He's not going to be able to get in the bunker unstable. That's, I think that's it. Even without the well, speedlings behind it. Without the bunker, yeah. without a Marauder, there's no Marines out. 
This bunker is going to finish oh, in just a Marauder second. Head. Marauder popped out, but there's more roaches here now. Can he block it? Oh, he could have blocked it! <laughs> ah, but now he's just going to move away from the bunker. Very intelligently going to start picking away at the Hellions and SCVs. Force him to have to defend his mineral line like so. And still going to do so much damage. Look at the worker count. It's 7 to 21 right now. Yeah. There's the GG, so Crazy Riving knocking out two Terrans. The first one with a really nice epic game. Second one with a nice build order win there. Let's go into game number three, Relkin. That's going to be quick. Of course, up next. Oh, we're going to have a ZBZ with someone who popularized that build that he just used. <laughs> it is going to be FXO's Lucky up next against Infinity 7's Crazy Moving. We'll be right back after a 90 second commercial break in between the games. Stay with us. Why didn't he make a bunker? <laughs> 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 Alright, so we got... Well, welcome anyone who's just joined us. This is the Epix Open, Korean King of the Hill, number 15. We are going into Crazy Moving from Infinity 7 up against FXO's Lucky. It is going to be dual site for the map. Crazy Moving currently 2-0 in his kill streak, taking out OGS, the STC, and uh, Lona as well. But this is going to be interesting. We're going to see a ZVZ coming up. Well, Crazy Moving's just asked for a second. I'm assuming he's just going to the bathroom or anything. And let's find out, shall we? He's probably teasing Mentalist. Because <laughs> like, we, ah, ah. we were originally scheduled to have Mentalist on, his teammate. Apparently he went to go get his hair done or something. So now we got Crazy <laughs> Moving instead, and he's like, hey, hey, you could have been playing. But of course, sometimes it's actually quite easy to take the win streak with only two or three wins, oh, yeah. uh, depending on a lot of these things happening. So, already starting off strong. Yeah, I just don't know why Loner didn't make a bunker. It's It's bothering me. All he needed was a bunker. I mean, it we still would have taken damage, but it would have been survivable damage if he had a bunker. And then he didn't have one. He didn't make a bunker? What are you talking about? He made a bunker after uh, he saw the roaches already halfway across the map. <laughs> that doesn't count. Alright, looks like Crazy Moving is back. Let's get underway in this next game. Both players ready? Let's go. Once Frequency hits the go button. Not hitting the go button. <laughs> there we go. Countdown has started. FXO is lucky up against Infinity 7's crazy moving dual site for game number three. Let's go. And welcome back everyone, game number 3 here for the FX Open Korean King of the Hill Number 15, we are going to have FXO's Lucky up against Infinity 7's Crazy Moving It is going to be on dual site, it is going to be a ZBZ And Crazy Moving showed us some pretty good ZBT in the last in the last two games So let's see how up to par the ZBZ is, Lucky's got a fairly fairly good ZBZ, of course not his best his best is, uh, I believe, Zerg versus Protoss, but we'll see how we go. And But we actually have a 10 pool coming out from Crazy Moving, wants to dictate the pace of this game very early, Grail Coon. Yeah, so we shall see how this goes for him. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, in Zerg versus Zerg, it's... The 10 pool is really just sort of the aggression that you try to catch your opponent off guard with, and then you drone safely behind it. Uh, well, it does punish a lot of greedy builds. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to go completely all-in, most players will go for the 6th pool, just because 
why not? And you can usually wind up droning safely behind that in case you do a good amount of damage and then you just want to stop. Uh, but a lot of the times, if you go for that six pool and you catch them off well, you guard, go for you'll go for the banelings. Really, really hurts. Oh! What he's gonna do? He's gonna completely ignore this hatchery, go up into the main, try and do a damage to the drones because the spawning pool. Oh, lucky! Why are you being greedy? <laughs> he's going for the the speedling opening. I mean, this is survival. You just have to micro really, really well with the drones. And you know who I've seen do that before? Do you? Yeah. FX so well, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> We, we are not biased at all, folks. Not at all. <laughs> it is going to be difficult to stop this because usually you just camp your zerglings around the eggs yeah. and send like two or three into the mineral line to deal with those drones. And it does a really good job of that. So, like, even if it was a 14 pool, you still have to be careful to make those first couple of links to be able to defend this. He does notice the zerglings coming up the ramp now. There's going to be six in his main. He's going to have to control these drones quite nicely to deal with this. Is he going to get us around on the zergling? Tray moving, crazy moving. Doesn't want that to happen, though. Doing a nice position on this spawning pool will do a lot of damage. He's going to try and force the drones to come out and fight in the middle of here. He's going to try and... But he, is he going to get this out? There is only... How many lava is there? There's only one or two lava. He's actually doing a nice job of pulling back. And there we go. He's getting four zerglings out. Like we were saying, it's come down to the control of the drones. He is still up by three drones in the drone count here against Crazy Moving. He's going to lose quite a few here now, though, as he is doing his best. But a lot of these zerglings getting on low health. He's down to ten drones now. He's trying to get us around, but this mineral walking is not working out well for him. Yeah, he's just not getting the control done right. He just lost every single drone. And yep. there's the GG for Crazy Moving. So, <laughs> or from Lucky, right. excuse me. What Lucky was trying to do there was trying to get the full surround, but unfortunately it never really worked out that well for him. So, Crazy Moving up to a 3-0 kill streak. Let's find out who he's up against next. And it's just really unfortunate build order from the last two games. Mm -hmm. Oh, we are going to have another ZBT. It's going to be OGS Illusion, formerly Xenex Ice Cream up next. So, it is going to be on Daybreak as well. A very interesting map. Let's get into it. We're going to have a quick... While we're getting the next game up and running, we're just going to run a quick ad break, so stay with us. Alright, so we are in the lobby now. We're going to have OGS Illusion, aka Xenex Ice Cream, formally up against Infinity 7's Crazy Moving. Can Infinity, can Crazy Moving con continue his win streak here? Let's find out. I think we're ready to go. Illusion is ready. Crazy Moving is ready. Let's get into it, Railcoon. My name is Chan Min Kim. You are watching FXO Television. Okay. Welcome back everyone. Game number four here for the FX Open Korean King of the Hill. Number 15, we have Crazy Moving up against OGS Illusion. Crazy Moving from hailing from Infinity 7. Did make Code A in the last, in Code A November. I uh, was knocked down to 
Code B again by o Liquid's Hero 1 2. But he's doing well today. He's currently on a 3 0 kill streak up against OGS, the STC, uh, World Elite's Lona, and FX. So he's lucky with the later two being very nice build choices. Of course, we are going to be on Daybreak now up against OGS Illusion, formerly known as Xenex Ice Cream. And we're going to have another ZVT here, Raokun. Yeah. It's be fun. We saw Crazy take out two Terrans before, so we'll mm -hmm. see how Illusion can do. He's been on here quite a few times, though it's been a while since his last visit. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how he's going to do up against Crazy. See, Crazy go for extreme macro game, then a, you know, a Roach bus that wasn't designed to be an all-in and caught Loner off guard, and then he 10 pool Lucky, so... <laughs> I was kind of expecting the next game, just from the logical progression, to be a 6 pool, but it looks like he's not quite gonna go for that, going for the hash <laughs> first. Maybe a Baneling Bust? You know, just keep going down the list of even more aggressive builds until he runs out or loses? I don't know. Well, the thing about that 10 pool, it wasn't really out of the ordinary for a lot of that no. map. It's a two-player map, you just want to catch people off guard. Lucky did go a little bit greedy with that 15 hatch, is punishable by any kind of early pull, as we saw. Lucky almost defended it, but it turns out that his uh, drone drill didn't work out to the best that it could have. Otherwise, he would have been almost okay and come out behind, but still been alive. Of course, we do see nothing out of the ordinary coming in here from OGS Illusion just yet. He's got his gas. And looks like he's going to be going for a factory. There it is. So we'll see if Crazy Moving's ready to go for that Roaches yet again to try and punish this. Yeah, once again, Crazy had a drone down near the natural watching for an SCV, but it did leave. And now there's no Overlord in position, but it does not look like Illusion wants to try and throw down a bunker just to pressure him. Sometimes even while going for the Hellions, a player will throw down a bunker just to see if they can get you to pull drones and uh, then like not even send any marines and just like damage your economy a little bit just for the price of the 25 minerals for canceling it later. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Illusion deciding he's not going to do that, just going to go straight into the Hellions. Oh my god, Unstable. We've never seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> what is well, that? We do have the fact. Three for three mm -hmm. in our Terran vs. Zergs that they started off with the reactor Hellions. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? What do you mean three for three? All three games so far, they've gone for the reactor Hellions. Oh, yeah, eventually, but they've all done it at different timings as well. Um, <clears throat> well, except for these last two. Looking here, though, looking down here, the creep spread is starting to move out here for Crazy Moving. And is he going to go for the Roaches again? Doesn't look no, like it. He's actually so. gone for the Spine Crawler instead. He's got, he did have that wing just poke up the top of the ramp. Sees that the reactor is on that factory. There's also another factory going down behind this uh, with another, whoa, with another reactor being built on the barracks. Is that going to be swapped over to see lots and lots of Hellions? Railcoon? I assume that's just going to be for Marines and then he mm -hmm. would put Attack Lab on the second factory, but it is possible that he'd just go for that overwhelming number of Hellions, like uh, who did... We have was seen that it Gumiho? every now and then in the King of the Hill, though. Uh, Gumiho has done it before, yes, where he kills Roaches with Hellions. <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, boss. Two Hellions coming into the natural now, though. Straight into the mineral line. Roast the two Zerglings that have popped and getting... Oh! Getting actually a couple of kills! On oh. these crazy moving, trying to oh. micro those drones away, not working out as well as he'd like. Does get four drone kills there with those two Hellions. And he is, he's swapping over to this factory, getting more Hellions out. Yeah, you can see that uh, Crazy is ahead on the worker count at the moment, but Illusion just has a whole lot more units, and now he's going to be making four Hellions at a time. So there's going to be a large number of Hellions here in a second. And if he does this like the way Gumiho did, he can actually just start killing the queens. And if you try to rely too much on the queens to defend, like Crazy yeah. is doing right now, there's no Roach Warren, he's not making that many Zerglings. This can wind up catching you completely off guard. That's a lot of Hellions unstable. Yeah, he does have that queen at the front, so he's going to get a little bit of a heads up when these come forward. But with that many Hellions, you can actually kill queens in a, a limited amount of time. He's actually going to go straight for the mineral line, though. Roast those Zerglings does take two hits from the spine crawler as he's trying to get in there. Forces everything to get off. He's again gone for the lair at his natural. Oh, oh he's if he gets the oh. shot off on the drones! Oh, he just barely missed the perfect shot that would have killed almost all of them. Still killed a lot, taking out nine right there in exchange for all of those Hellions. Could have gone a little bit better, but still definitely worth it. Getting nine drones, forcing all these queens off, delaying these injections, etc. 
but the layer is just about to finish for crazy and if we check the worker count it is still slightly in his favor yeah well looking here and there's a roach warren now on the way oh, as my screen goes black yeah hopefully i'm not lagging the game yes you are what's going on you can come back now please there we go all right hopefully that doesn't happen again but like I was saying, uh, Crazy Moon has just had enough. He wants that Roach Warren to go down. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm sick of your Hellions. I'm getting Roaches. Go away. Because there's really nothing out here except for two Marines from the very early game to be able to deal with that. We do see, of course, the Barracks was being floated around. Uh, he's coming home now. There's still more Hellions sitting on this creep. There is seven of them sitting there just going, yes, I am here. I want to run into your mineral line sometime. Yeah, and with the fact that he's seen this many Hellions this far, he knows what Illusion is doing, so he has to get the Roaches. If Illusion waited longer and actually come with, like, all of these Hellions at the same time, it might have caught him off guard, because I don't think Crazy would have dropped the, the Roach Horn, because he seemed to drop it in response to that many Hellions. Yeah. And, uh, so, we'll see how this works Whoa. out. He is just going to kill this Queen. <laughs> just but he does see this amount of roaches now. Roach speed is on the way due to the lair finishing at the natural. He can go on the aggressive now if he wants to. There is still that, uh, no tech lab on the factory. He's going into the tanks. He's going into that marauder with a second tech lab on the barracks. Second barracks as well. More. One, two, three barracks being completed in a second. And these roaches are moving over. Is he going to have enough? He's got a bunker going down at the front. There is an insane amount of Hellions right there, Railcoon. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of Hellions. If he micros that, he can actually start killing some of the roaches just to buy some time. Uh, yeah. Especially since they have to come through this funnel in a straight line like that. Oh my god. That is not a nice place to be attacking through with these roaches. Oh. Crazy is going to force his way up, though. But look at how much damage those roaches are taking. Is he seriously winning a fight against roaches with Hellions? Well, when you're all bunched up and get complete splash damage, especially with Marauder in the next oh! day, yes, you will. And these Hellions did have the great position. Ling's coming in from the right-hand side, though, tanking a lot of the damage. The bunker is going down very quickly. There's only two Marauders in there. One of the Marauders is going to drop. There's SCBs being pulled at the oh, same he's time. Lining he's trying up. to get a nice surround. He's trying to get it uh, coming down with the, to the lower ground with those Hellions up from the south to try and get a good line of sight on all of those Roaches. More Roaches coming forward as well. Doing a nice to, amount of damage to those SCVs, and he's still on 33 to 36 workers, and these roaches can't be killed now by this limited amount of Hellions. He's going to be ca very careful, losing more and more SCVs. Crazy moving might he's have just taken advantage of the fact that there's nothing but Hellions here. Yeah, there are some Marauders popping out as well as Marines. I think he can hold Unstable. He did lose a lot of workers, but look at this. The roaches are only a few left. He might have to pull workers a for a second time, but oh, there's more roaches coming. Oh, wow. Crazy's barely going to overwhelm him. There's the GG. Yeah, it almost looked like Hellions were going to take out those roaches, but unfortunately, he just had no way to make something that killed roaches in time to deal with that very risky build going for that double reacted Hellions coming out there. Nicely done by Crazy Moving. He will go 4 0 oh, already, Railcoon. That's been a quick few games. And of course, up next, let's see. If, oh, oh, look who's next, Railcoon. If anyone's going to stop him, we've got NS Hoso Sage up next. He has an insanely beastie PBZ. This is going to be a good one. What do you think? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right, so as we get the players into the lobby and start this up, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, but as soon as it ends, we'll be right into the next game. Stay with us. I can't believe he almost held that with just Hellions. Mm So we've just got a bit of chat in the game lobby here at the moment from Crazy Moving. I'm not sure if he's asking for a break or anything. Uh... I think he's just talking to Sage. Most likely, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, they're talking to each other. <laughs> I think they're mm-hmm. trying to psych each other out right now based on the faces that they're throwing into the chat. <laughs> Hey, it's a valid strategy. Trying to psych your opponent out in the lobby before you go. Mm-hmm. So we're waiting for the players to say that they're ready. Yep, it is going to be a PVZ on Antigua Shipyard. It's a great map for this matchup as well. I really like this one. Especially now that there's no gold minerals anymore. Alright, looks like we're ready to go. Crazy Moving says he's ready. Sage, are you Sage? ready? Find out. Oh, there we go. We're both ready. Countdown has started, Railcoon. Let's get into it. And there's Hoso Sage against Infinity Sevens. Crazy moving. This is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Game. The next game here is going to be game number five for the FX Open Korean King of the Hill number 15. We are going to have NS Hoso Sage up against Infinity Sevens. Crazy Moving. Crazy Moving has actually gone on a pretty good kill streak so far today. It has any rail He's got four wins against ESTC, OGS Illusion, FXO's Lucky, and who's? Oh my God, I'm mental blanking on the fourth. Uh, Lona as well. So let's find out how good his ZVP is and Sage. Very, very strong in this matchup, to say the least. Uh, yeah. Uh, slight understatement there. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing how he does, because there were a couple people in there that I thought were just... He was going to be able to take out crazy, but... Mm, Sage is pretty good, and he did crazy loss to a Protoss in Code A, so... Maybe yeah. Sage will be the guy to take him out. The problem is, for a win streak is really long for a King of the Hills. We've had a lot of King of the Hills on the Korean side, where a 4-0 or even a 3-0 was our longest streak. So, even if he does lose this one, he is in a good position to try and win the $200 for the longest streak. Yep, absolutely. We do, of course, see a pull first. <clears throat> well, not first, but he was forced to go into that build there and buy Sage with that pylon down at the bottom of the ramp. We do see the forge going down as well for Sage up in the top right hand corner. And he's actually cancelled that pylon. He's stuck his probe there though. Will he remake a pylon later on when the drones and stuff try to come down? Or will he just sit back off? We do have another drone coming down of course. I'm going to try and get that hatchery down. He really wants that down. Oh he's going to get it! What? Sage that actually moved his probe too far out and Crazy immediately clicked on the hatchery. He must have just been spam clicking with the shift H there. Uh, that was like a very small opportunity to get that in there and it somehow snuck it in. That's actually really nice. Uh, it wasn't before he made the Zerglings, which would have been really good if he could have saved on those Zerglings and made them drones, but uh, it was still fast enough that he only has to make four instead of getting a couple more out to chase down the, the probe while grabbing the watchtower and hitting that pylon at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty, so going back over here, we do see that cannon about halfway done. And instantly going to that third base here for Crazy Moving, so wise decision coming out from him there. <clears throat> Just due to the Forge expanding. Like, he has to be careful. A lot of Protoss are starting to Chrono Boost out. One or two Zealots now. And oh, the Overlord a little bit too close to that cannon. And Zerglings coming in here now. It looks like he was trying to bait a couple of hits out of that. We'll get the Zerglings into the base now. This is very frustrating for Sage. Yeah, he's not going to do damage with this, but he's going to get some free scouting information, which is always nice at this point in the game. Uh, can actually be kind of difficult to do. That's probably why he had that Overlord there. Didn't time it quite yeah. correctly, but... Uh, you do see some players do that on purpose sometimes, but he hasn't actually checked out the main base yet, just to make sure there's nothing hiding. Um, 
you know, the cybernetics core in. isn't down just yet, so he wasn't too concerned about it, but it's always, you know, a good thing just to look up here. Also seeing the number of assimilators is usually pretty important, which he's doing right now. Now trying to harass the, the probes as much as possible. All in all, these two Zerglings have done a great job. Yeah. Uh, down back at the base, Sage has scouted out that third, and the Lings are instantly on top of that. You don't want a random cannon showing up in your in your expansions, no. especially this early in the game, forcing some Lings to go through. Oh, crazy moving, did lose one Ling to those probes, unfortunately. Look at the units lost. Neither one of them has lost their workers yet, so very good job by both of them here. Of course, one Zealot, no, that's a probe running around to the bottom right. The Zealot is still chasing around this Zergly, <laughs> going around. Yeah, Not gonna Crazy catch him, is joining up pretty hard right now. Hasn't actually yeah. remade any Zerglings right now. Just, mm, he doesn't have any spine crawlers either. He went for the quick third, and since it was scouted, a pretty common response is just to kind of boost out a lot of Zealots and just mm -hmm. try and kill it. So he is kind of trying to walk the line here on the minimum number of units he can make. You can see there are some Zerglings peeking out now. He never even started the Zergling speed upgrade either. So it looks like he's just going to try and defend with slow Zerglings and queens because there's still no spine crawlers but there's no queens either i i guess he's just gonna use that third base if he does try to pressure him just make a lot of zerglings but you'd think he'd get the zergling speed if he was doing that but he has finally started to re uh restart mining of gas so we'll probably see him start that zergling speed soon as well as throw down his tech of choice soon why is there a random shadow here Sorry, what? Oh, there's an asteroid. Like, the shadow is showing through the terrain, and I thought there was, like, some invisible unit floating there for a second. <laughs> it's just, like, some weird bug in the map. Because I know you were having that issue where sometimes you were seeing the shadows of units, but you couldn't see the actual, like, unit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... So that was I was weird, concerned being chased was... off the stalker now. The Roach Warrior is on the way, of course. Sage following up with a lot of gateways. Has been scouted now by this Overlord. Even saw the Twilight Council... Really lucky there for Crazy Moving, he's actually seen all of that. We do see 48 drones, or sorry, 47 to 44, and now lots of sentries being warped in by Sage. Wants to get that energy up. He's down here at the bottom, but he has been spotted where he's coming in from. We're going to work on those rocks. Will take quite a while with his current unit composition, but he also has spine crawlers going down here as well. Roach is on the way. No lair at all, so there's not going to be any kind of of burrow, any roach speed or anything like that, so it's going to be very difficult for him to try and deal with this with pure roaches. Needs more and more. Well, actually, no, they're spork. One of them's a spork crawler, one's a oh. spine crawler, I'm sorry. Look at this. Uh, yeah, he actually put down two spork crawlers, and then I was wondering about that. I was going to say that always just making sure he's safe, and then right then, Sage just threw down a dark shrine, so he yeah. is going to have the detection out for when those DTs come, but he's got to live until then, because that's a lot of units, and he still doesn't have that many roaches. Zergling speed is finally going to finish in a second, and he does have that macro hatch done. He might have to give up this third base, though, Unstable. Yeah, we do have a warp prism coming through with the DT shrine as well, and a nicely done read by Crazy Moving there. He's, he realizes what could be going on, but he's actually losing quite a few units. Nice force fields there by Sage as he is backing off, saving all those units there. Uh, but... The Roach Count is starting to get higher, Ten, 11 drones in production now by Crazy Moving, he has to be careful, and looks like, look at this, he's actually got a pylon over here on the left, with a zealot that cleaned up, looks like a ling that was attacking it for a little bit, and this warp prism oh, is going to be very frustrating. Sage just can't hit those force fields, he keeps trying to split these roaches, and he just keeps barely missing them, and keeping the roaches on the other side, with that he is pretty much out of energy on those sentries, so he's going to back off the, uh... War Prism is most of the way across the map, and he does have a pylon over here, so he can load up some of the Dark Templars, get into well, the War Prism. Well, it's due to the timing that I really like that positioning. It's a very thought-out build, because the War Prism gets there right as the DT Shrine finishes. Of course, the DTs are here now, and he's ready for it. There's a Spore Crawler. Is he going to get the surround on these DTs? No. Sage wisely pulling back as soon as he saw that Spore Crawler. A nice re... And I believe that was purely oh, because he's played Sage before. Sage is coming in onto the third base. Most of the units are out.